it's uh, truly a pl pleasure to be here, uh, and thank you very much to Inspire for the invitation. Uh, I look at that title, Senior Advisor, and uh, uh, I'm quite humbled, actually, in the presence of so many of you who've spent so many years in the subject matter of SDI. I'm relatively new to this uh, uh, subject matter. It's just only five years that I've been with uh, uh, the UN. Uh, I guess uh, I'm one of those very few, perhaps the only one, who has been at the center of this particular uh, initiative called the United Nations Spatial Data Infrastructure for the last five years that uh, my colleagues have seen it fit to call me senior advisor combined with my age, I would assume. <clears throat> uh, I'd like to say a few things about really uh, the organization that uh, owns the initiative, uh, the UN Spatial Data Infrastructure, and that's the United Nations Geographic Information Working Group. Uh, I'll say a few things about the process uh, that we've gone through, which is a particular uh, strategy of uh, standing up a spatial data infrastructure with, at the UN. And uh, I'll close with a few remarks as to what is next with UNSDI. Uh, UNJUIG, as we pronounce it, United Nations Geographic Information Working Group, was established in year 2000. It's strictly a, a voluntary uh, organization. Uh, geospatial professionals that are working in different UN organizations, and there are many, many UN organizations, have come together to establish this uh, entity in year 2000. Last year we uh, celebrated our first decade. It's uh, typically professionals coming together to talk about uh, issues of common concern and uh, setting up standards, uh, making sure that best practices are generalized and things of that nature. Um, it's organized itself into uh, historically uh, task groups, but now we don't have task groups. We have what's called special interest groups and work groups. We don't necessarily have a leader. And just to give you a sense of what those task groups are, uh, the five of those were listed there. Currently, we have United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. I'm trying to avoid using UN jargon as much as possible, UNOSA, and Economic Commission for Africa. ECA are the chairs. Uh, I think the, at the last count we had something like 30 uh, members. Uh, some of these members are very active, like the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, uh, World Food Program, OCHA, and so on. And uh, some of them are not. World Bank happens to be a member, but uh, they haven't been an active participant up until now. Uh, the typical GIS view of things, you know, layers, prevails our thinking, and uh, we distinguish with what we call core data and thematic data. This is the typical map-based layers. And uh, the, a number of different uh, pillars of the UN, most notably development, environment, humanitarian affairs, safety and security and peacekeeping, really uh, guide uh, or inform the use cases, let's put, of uh, our work. Uh, we like this term, SDIs are about working smarter, not harder. And the axioms that we uh, build or our practices are uh, typically the reuse uh, issue, the sharing of the costs, and uh, learning from others' best practices, and avoiding pitfalls, of course, by definition. Uh, we're fully cognizant of the fact that SDIs now are at multiple levels, even from the enterprise all the way up to uh, global. The UN wants to be part of this because of its many mandates and very large presence internationally. Uh, and that is taking shape mostly in terms of thematic SDIs, thematic spatial data infrastructures. So we actually see the United Nations spatial data infrastructure emerging as a system of systems, as interoperable thematic SDIs, uh, humanitarian, peacekeeping, safety and security, and so on. Lots of parallels with other similar regional and national initiatives. Uh, the major milestones of the UNSDI development, the first time the concept was uh, introduced within the uh, Anjuri community, it was in 2005. We have annual uh, plenaries. At that point, uh, Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN and uh, World Food Program were leading Anjuri. Uh, we have two-year terms heading UNJUI, and in 2006, uh, there was a strategy document that was adopted by the UNJUI uh, community. 
Uh, in 2007, in Bangkok, Thailand, when we met, uh, Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, my former uh, organization, and United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees were heading Anjouik. And we decided how we're going to go about operationalizing the strategy. And I'll say a few more things about that later on. In uh, Vienna, 2008, the last OCHA UNHCR uh, plenary, we uh, adopted, Anjouik adopted what we call the UNSTI framework, which is the way that we proceeded to operationalize the implementation. In Bonn last year, uh, a significant event was the fact that the Ass Assistant Secretary General and the Chief Information Technology Officer of the UN Secretariat came on board by allocating resources, essentially bringing me on board uh, to help the Anjouik co-chairs to implement UNSDI. And uh, the first quarter of this year, we have been able to update the UNSDI framework, which is the, again, the operational instrument for us to move forward on UNSDI. And we have now on the table a specific project proposal that we call the Center of Excellence for UNSDI. A uh, few things about the governance and implementation of SDI, expanding on some of the uh, issues that I've raised. Uh, UNSDI governance, there are essentially three different bodies within the UNSDI governance. The steering committee consists of strictly UN entities. The technical advisory group includes UN and non-UN, and the project team is actually the implementer, the, uh, the ones who are going to put this thing together. Uh, that project team, of course, is very much dependent on us finding the funds to proceed on this project. The framework has a number of different characteristics. It's not a grand design. We didn't come up with a grand design of how an SDI should be, but we're building it gradually in an evolutionary manner on specific projects that the UN agencies are currently working on. And we call these UN SDI deliverables. Each project is headed by a UN agency. And the UN part, non-UN partners are working with the UN agencies to implement these uh, projects. That's the nature of the UN and non-UN partnership. Uh, there's a partners group. And the membership in the partners group is optional. Uh, UNSCI has multiple uh, implementation phases. Uh, phase one implementation, which is identified in this UNSCI framework, is 24 months. Uh, it's got three different parts, what we call core deliverables, thematic geodata sets and services, and capacity building. Uh, the core UNSCI deliverables are what we call the minimum technical governance requirements. And uh, in the document, the heading for that section is standards and best practices for provisioning of core geodata sets. Obviously, geodata set provisioning is a very important part of SDI. Without the data, there is not much of a uh, SDI. Uh, and then there's the interoperable geospatial services. These are truly cross-cutting uh, interagency uh, activities. Uh, spatial data warehouse, the term warehouse is not really a good term, but it was the term that was used within the ICT uh, structure of the UN, and the visualization facility is something that uh, is a, a very clear uh, value added that we could uh, engage in. This is how the specific projects look like. I'm not going to spend time going through it. There are at the moment 16 thematic geosets and services that are being led by a number of different UN agencies. Uh, some of them are new, updated as of this year, and some of them are uh, from the previous round. Um, as you see, more and more are calling themselves as delivering the socioeconomic development or component of SDI, delivering the environment component of SDI, the crisis information component of SDI, UN SDI. And there are, of course, uh, specific uh, standards, issues, and, and so on. It's, it is a bit of a mismatch, uh, a list of uh, uh, projects that we're currently taking on. And there is, of course, capacity building. I'm not going to spend much time on this. And uh, these are activities that UN agencies are already undertaking, like we've seen in the previous pre presentation, and uh, both within the UN as well as with countries. Uh, just some summary statistics for uh, as of quarter one. There are some, uh, more than 12 UN organizations involved in UNSDI, so it's more than 30% of Anjouik membership. 
24 UNSTI deliverables are now being worked on. Uh, that might change because some of them will probably be consolidated. In 2010, five more UN organizations got involved and two new deliverables